A few years back, the company Genki hit the mid-pandemic capture card scene with the Genki Shadowcast, a capture card that raised over $4 million on Kickstarter and wound up being the same $5 capture card everyone kept talking about that year. Despite the disappointment in the marketing and the same flaws plaguing the Shadowcast that plagued all of these can't links at the time, I did applaud Genki for their efforts in making the device more user-friendly. They put USB-C right on the back and designed it to fit right in your Switch dock to plug your Switch into a computer. Plus, they developed some apps for some hopefully low-latency capture gaming. But it wasn't great. Now they've released both an upgraded Shadowcast 2 and this video's focus, the Shadowcast 2 Pro, a wholly different capture card with much more impressive specs. I kind of want to say they did it right this time, but there are, uh, there, there are still some quirks. First and foremost, we have actually competitive specs. For $120, the Shadowcast Pro 2 or 2 Pro beats out Elgato's Game Capture Neo in capabilities by a fair margin and competes quite decently in the market on the whole. The capture card can pass through normal 720p and 1080p signals from your Nintendo Switch or older HDMI game consoles, sure, but it can also pass through 4K 60Hz, 1440p 144Hz, and 1080p up to 240Hz signals as well as pass through HDR and variable refresh rate. Not bad. These are older gen specs, but the card also offers a direct 4K 60fps capture over USB, making it a competitive middle ground between the newer HDMI 2.1 capture cards and the older HDMI 2.0 USB capture cards that couldn't capture 4K 60 directly. It's not perfect, however, as the 4K 60 capture is MJPEG only, it comes with higher input latency to the capture preview and seems to drop frames quite often, in my experience. These first two captures of Returnal and Modern Warfare Remastered are not a fluid 60fps. Every few frames there's a dropped frame, resulting in a not smooth viewing experience. Plus, the MJPEG compression does feel a little chunky compared to your normal uncompressed signal from capture cards or newer generation MJPEG. This is not a bandwidth limitation, I'm using the same port and cable and everything that I can capture uncompressed 4K60 or compressed 4K 120 from the Elgato 4KX with this machine. It's just dropping frames for some reason during the compression or transfer stage on the device itself before it even hits OBS. Moving beyond that, the rest of the capture specs are pretty impressive too. It can capture 1080p in full 444 xRGB format, which is wonderful for scaling and green screening and other effects. Awesome. 1440p60 is in 420 NV12, which is fine. Uh, but even better for those doing high frame rate gaming, you can capture 1080p at 120 FPS in NV12 or 240 FPS if you accept MJPEG encoding. I cannot test 240 Hertz at this time, but 120 FPS seems to work great in my testing. I'd also like to note here that the Shadowcast 2 Pro has a decently flexible scaler built in, happily outputting whatever resolution you want in OBS from your source, which has historically been a problem for some USB capture cards. The HDR pass-through introduces more problems, however. You can't capture HDR directly to let OBS do the tone mapping for you, and the built-in HDR to SDR tone mapping comes out a little dark and not great looking. Even when recalibrating the PS5's HDR output to the capture card instead of the TV, and you can see just how different the two are here, I still don't get great results. I'd stick to playing in SDR if capture quality is a priority for you. This is also where I encountered another point of instability. After tweaking the HDR settings and not being happy with the results I got, I turned HDR off entirely on my PS5 and captured a pretty solid match of Modern Warfare Remastered here. But the colors are just like cranked to the max. It looks crazy. I'm guessing it just didn't disengage the HDR to SDR tone mapping despite not getting an HDR signal anymore. So I had to reboot my console and replug the capture card to get colors looking right again. Input latency wise, this is something I'm always more critical on based on the marketing of the individual capture card I'm reviewing. Once again, Genki focuses on their lightning fast previews and low input latency to since you know their product is heavily targeted towards the use case of playing from the capture card preview. I still don't recommend playing from the preview, even with this. In the 4K 60M JPEG mode, input latency to the OBS preview is around 72 milliseconds, which is not anything special these days, and we now have a mountain of capture cards that perform better here. Swapping to uncompressed NV12 and 1440p, however, and the latency drops by nearly 20 milliseconds to 53 milliseconds, which is far more competitive and a good spot to be in. Genki also offers a dedicated app to play and capture from, which should theoretically be the lowest latency option. However, on Windows, they, for some reason, now only provide a bunch of dev files and a PowerShell install script that I couldn't even get working, and a bunch of chats on the file hosting of people asking why they can't install it. It's a super bizarre approach, and they just need to release a normal installer package ASAP. 
Testing the browser-based SkinKey Arcade tool results in 74 to 75 milliseconds of input latency in both 4K60 compressed and 1440p60 uncompressed modes. Lastly, I wanted to test their iPad app for latency, as a switch into an iPad is a commonly referenced use case here. Input latency was around 82 milliseconds to that app in any format, so not great here either. None of these I would recommend playing anything but slow or turn-based games from. It just won't be a good time, especially with the iPad preview being highly variable and continuing to roll up in latency constantly. Otherwise, their iPad app is wonderful. Yeah, however, it, it, it's seriously great. You have all kinds of tools for monitoring, such as grids and aspect, aspect ratio correction. You've got the ability to take uncompressed TIFF screenshots or normal ones, as well as use HEVC encoding with manual bitrate selection for even higher quality captures. I just really want to encourage them to implement ProRes encoding for the M2 and higher iPad Pros. Please. The app has a bunch of options and let you use any UVC device to capture, not just ginky ones. I find myself using it to all the time now for portable captures. In terms of my normal oddball capture testing, the device supports native 720 by 480 capture from retro HDMI systems and full 444 XRGB, which is wonderful for scaling. It supports the 1920 by 1440 mode from the retro jump scaler for the PS2 just fine, though it interprets it as 2560 by 1440 and will need an aspect ratio correction filter to fix it in OBS, as usual for these cards. It supports the native 1440p screen mirror from my iPad Pro or 4K external monitor mode, which is handy. It even cooperates great with my Steam Deck in all resolutions, though there isn't a native 1280 by 800 mode, so you'll need an aspect ratio filter to fix that here too. As an added bonus, the Shadowcast 2 Pro works in Windows, in Mac, in OBS and QuickTime, and even Linux in both OBS and GUVC view. Though I did have some issues with 4K60 MJPEG not working properly in OBS on Linux, it was acting a little funny. But in 1440p60 NV12, I had no issues capturing and it looked great. In Mac, I now need to point out, since people seem to get mad about this, that you don't get to control what resolution a capture device comes in at in QuickTime. So you may not be able to capture native 4K60, but you get full control in OBS, just like Windows, however. Just remember to set your bitrate properly when you make a new profile so you don't want your great, because you don't want your great match that you captured to look like this. F's in chat. That looks a lot better. Lastly, I wanted to mention that they sent me their Covert Dock 2. This has been my absolute favorite dock for Switch, Steam Deck, and even my iPad Pro. I just keep it plugged into the wall, run HDMI to my HDMI switch for my capture card, and then I just plug the USB end into whatever device I want to capture without having to take off controllers or grips or anything. It is very handy. I'm just not sure I'll find a video to flip from it. All in all, I'm very impressed with this offering from Genki. It's nice to see that they're stepping up their game beyond just flipping the lowest cost capture card that we had already seen from 20 different AliExpress sellers. And I love all the little gadgets they've been coming up with for your consoles alongside these. I hope they can continue to catch up with new releases. I will be taking a look at the normal base Shadowcast 2 in a future video, so get subscribed and check out this video if you want to see how the original compares. Remember to be kind, rewind.